Hi everyone, welcome to week five, six, week six. Uh, okay, so we have made a website, we've created a menu which breaks out details of what we do. We didn't just say work or projects, we actually said, you know, if you're a graphic designer, you said, you know, branding, packaging, posters, typography. If you're a ceramicist, maybe you, I, I don't know what your categories might be, maybe they would be, you know, hand building, wheel thrown projects, um, large scale works, installations, functional art, you know, the categories that are relevant for you. So we've made a website, we've made some categories and some pages to go with each of those categories. We spent two weeks on photography, pictures of our work, pictures of ourself. Uh, then last week we wrote about um, our work. So for each of those category pages, you wrote one or several sentences at the top, kind of explaining, contextualizing uh, that page, what the work that's on that page. And then for each of the items on the page, you wrote one or several sentences uh, explaining what this piece is about. Um, if it's a commercial piece, why you made the choices you made, how those help your client communicate to their audience. If it's a fine art piece, um, you know, a little something you might want to share uh, with viewers about your process, about your investigation, you know, whatever you might like to talk about. So this week is kind of our final piece of the puzzle. Uh, we're going to write about ourselves, which basically is two parts. It's a CV or resume and uh, an and about me, an artist statement. So um, in the world of business, Americans tend to use resumes and Europeans tend to use CVs. However, in the world of uh, two worlds in America where um, uh, CVs are used is fine art and uh, academia, the university. So if you're going to teach, then you would have a CV instead of a resume. If you want to exhibit in galleries, you would have a CV instead of a resume. If you want to get hired, have clients, get a job, etc., you'd probably write a resume. They're not all that different. They're both, uh, obviously they used to be pieces of paper. Now they're, you know, web pages or PDFs or whatever. Um, uh, that say a little bit about what you've done. They list, uh, you know, work you've done, uh, jobs you've had, um, exhibitions, and so on. Uh, you know, typically in reverse chronologic order, the new stuff first and then the older stuff last. Uh, when you're starting out and you don't have too much to list, sometimes people like to alter the order to kind of highlight um, you know, whatever they think is most relevant. Uh, I, I'll give you some links uh, to the page on our website that talks about resumes and CVs. And also, if you just, hop, of course, hop on the web, you'll find tons of examples specifically for artists um, on how you format these documents. But as I always, you know, I'm always saying shake the tree, find the art that you made that you forgot that you made that you can include on your portfolio if you need to. Uh, the same is true for resumes and CVs. You know, you may have done more things than you remember. And also, you know, we have this kind of imposter complex where we, um, we feel unworthy. And so we can be dismissive of our own work, of our own accomplishments, really. Um, you know, if you designed wedding invitations for your cousin's wedding uh, and, you know, you, you did it for nothing or it was a gift to your cousin, you don't have to say family member did for free, you know, that's not really relevant. Skip that. All you have to say is that you had a client who wanted to communicate a feeling about, you know, this wedding, about this relationship to an audience, their family and friends, and therefore you made these choices in designing those invitations um, to express their relationship, to express their love. Um, so there, there you go. As I've also mentioned, you know, if you were a cashier at Nordstrom, but every, you got to do window displays from time to time, you know, you don't have to talk about your skills at counting money. You can, you can feature uh, that you did window displays and, and, you know, what the 
goal in designing those windows was and you know how you approached it what you think you achieved um, so shake the tree find things you've done that could be included find maybe jobs that you've had that seem not so relevant that can be you know without lying or fabricating stuff that can be bent a little bit to fit you know what you want people to think about or what you're trying to think about now um, so again I'll give you links uh, uh, write a resume or a CV. They're not super different. It's, it's essentially the same content. You could have both. Um, a lot of people like to make their resumes or CVs in design software, which is cool. We're artists. Uh, you know, like InDesign or Illustrator or whatever you might use. Um, and then make a PDF of that and then put the PDF on their website. This is okay, but um, some people, I guess, do like PDFs because, uh, I don't know, they hate trees and they just like gigantic stacks of paper in their office, or I'm not really sure why people like PDFs, but some people, I guess, do. Uh, personally, I hate them. Why do I need to go to your website to download a document that I could then see if I have the software to open it or download the software I need to open. Why would I do all that when I could just look at a web page and read your resume or CV? So personally, I strongly prefer just a web page. No, uh, you know, no, it can't have as much fine design detail as you could do in InDesign or Illustrator, but it can have enough. It can have color, it can have flourishes, it can have hairlines, it can have boxes, it can have images, it can have anything you want, really. Um, but of course, you're going to keep it fairly clean because you want it to be presentable both on a, you know, a nice big desktop monitor and on a little tiny phone wherever anybody might want to view your work or your resume CV. So um, the answer to this question is, um, for personally, I, I guess I might do a PDF just in case somebody did want it, but I would really encourage you to do both. Sure, if somebody wants to download a PDF, have a button for that, but don't force people to fart around with your PDF when they could just, you, they could just look at a web page. So put that content also as live web content. The other bonus is that I think the search engines even now are not that great at searching content inside a PDF. So when you make that same content live web content on a web page, it's more easily searchable. And if somebody's searching for something that you've listed in your resume or CV, it's more likely to come up. So that's resumes and CVs. Uh, write one, or if you already have one, then just polish it up. Um, if you don't already have one, let me say that the first one is the hardest to write because it's very intimidating. We're not typing on paper, but to use that metaphor, you know, it's a blank piece of paper. What am I going to put on this blank piece of paper? Once you have one, uh, whether you love it or don't love it, almost doesn't matter. Once you have one, then you just revise. It's just, oh, well, this now is kind of older and not that relevant. I'll take it off. Oh, I have this new thing. Let me add this. And oh, here's a thing that I should probably keep, but I kind of wrote about it weirdly. Let me make that a little more on point. So revision's always easier. So revise if you have one, uh, go ahead and give it a crack and get that first one out if you don't already have a CV or a resume. Okay, then we have the other half, your about statement, about me. And I really want to emphasize the opening lines of your statement should not be that you live in Long Beach or any other city. It should not be that you're a student at Long Beach State University. Uh, it should not be that this experience with your grandfather when you were four catapulted you onto your career in art. Honestly, those things are not the way to connect to a curator at a gallery, an HR director at a company, a potential client who will commission you. All of these people are looking for something from you. They are looking for an illustration. They are looking for an identity system for their business. They're looking for an emerging Southern California abstract painter. They're looking for something and it's not your story about when you were four 
or the fact that you're a student or any of these things. So you have, you know, some of that could appear at the bottom, the last paragraph. So if someone's really interested in you, they can keep reading and they can hear about earlier influences. That could be interesting, but you have to open with something much more why you stranger who doesn't know me, why you care about me, why you want to learn more about me. So in the commercial case, you know, people don't hire you because you're, uh, you know, smart, clever, pretty, whatever. People hire you because they have a problem and they believe you have convinced them that you can solve their problem. Uh, they have friction in their, you know, whatever they're doing, their, their project, and they believe that you can smooth out that friction. They have, if you will, pain and they believe that you can take their pain away. So you need to present the case for how you are a solution. And in a sense, I'm, you know, that's a, a sort of a business example, but even in the, the gallery, the fine art context, still, you know, a curator, you know, curators can seem kind of hard to get in touch with and so many artists want to be exhibited. It seems like they have all the power and the artists are kind of maybe begging, oh, please, please show me and start my career. But in a sense, curators have a problem too. I mean, they have to keep exhibiting. Um, you know, whether they're at a specific gallery that has a new show every, you know, whatever it might be, six, eight weeks or something, um, or whether they're an independent curator roaming around, um, you know, pitching new ideas and doing different projects at different institutions. Curators like HR directors, like uh, art directors who need an illustrator, all of these people need something. They need content to fill their thing. It, their thing might be an art gallery that's exploring contemporary ideas. Their thing might be, you know, an advertising piece that, you know, compels someone to become involved with whatever this person is, is producing. Um, so that about me has to be about how you solve their problem, how you and your work solve their problem. So again, if it's for a curator to include you in their gallery, it's going to sound, you know, fairly different than if it's for the owner of a sports bar to hire you to create their identity system. Those are two pretty different scenarios. But in both cases, you know, don't say I'm a student at Long Beach State and I'm going to graduate in a few months. That's not why anybody wants you. They want you because of the power of your work. So make your work your thinking, how you create, how you present, all of that should be how you start. Make that your message. And then again, you can skip the, the, the grandfather when I was four story completely if you want, or it could appear at the bottom after you've made your strong case about how you're going to solve their problems. So that's it, basically two things, resume or CV and an about statement for your website about page that presents you as the solution to whatever your visitors are looking for. Good luck. Let me know if I can help. See you soon.